This is Andy Porro of Boxing News. I'm joined by promoter Ben Shalom here in Manchester. Ben, it was a pleasure. A fiery main event press conference there. Yeah, you know what? I didn't expect it because I've... Franchot has been extremely respectful up until now and, and, and she stuck it on Savannah, but fair enough, she's the champion, she's the undisputed champion and she's come over here to Savannah Marshall's uh, country and probably feels like a bit of a procession for Savannah with the media here and the attention here and, and I think she just wanted to let Savannah know who, who really is the champion and, and it makes for an interesting fight because I think it's, it's actually mentally focused Savannah even more on, on what's at stake here. And, yeah, it's a 50-50 fight and, and both fighters are desperate to win. How much pressure is there on Savannah's shoulders to have her hand raised on the back of a defeat to Clarissa? A defeat here really could be damning for her career. There's a lot of pressure, but she's headlined. This is a four-time headline and there's been pressure in every one of those fights. October, no one... Fighters can't buy the experience that she had in October. Most female fighters will never experience that level of attention, that level of scrutiny that she experienced in October. And she's going to be a better fighter for it, I think. Peter said to me for a while, wait till you see Savannah at super middleweight. And she's now in a division where she feels more comfortable at. Of course, there's pressure. She wants the pressure. She could have chosen any fight and she went straight back into an undisputed and against the best super middleweight in the world. And um, let's see what happens. She's going to need a career best performance, I believe, to win on Saturday. Tash Jonas returns at a weight below. Walk me through this fight with Candy Wyatt. Yeah, so another fighter going for a two-weight, to become a two-weight world champion on the on the same card. It's uh, Tash is, you know, one that um, has been a long-term project for us. She, she wanted to win a world title straight away and we managed to make that happen. When she signed for us, she was actually a lightweight. She then become a super welterweight, won one title, three, two titles, three titles. But now she wants to create legacy and now she's going to a, a division that she feels a lot more comfortable in and, and I'm happy to see her at welterweight. I think it felt there was a reason why we are at super welterweight and the quality kept showing and she, she just got better and better and better but now we actually get her to see her where I think we're going to see an even better Tasha Jonas and whether that's at welterweight or even super lightweight, super lightweight later in the year, that's where she feels the big names are, that's the names that she's chasing. I mean, on that note, those big names are all under a different promotional banner. And just looking at um, a fight which was announced yesterday, Sandy Roy and Jessica McCaskill are fighting for the other titles in the welterweight division. If Natasha gets a hand raised, is there more of a willingness or an openness to try and make the fights with Matt Troom in comparison to what we saw with the Terry Harper about? Look, I think the, the Terry Harper thing and, and everything that happened there is, 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 is a question for Tasha and Joe Gallagher. I know there was... I know from speaking to them, it, it was there was a lot of history there, and it and, and it and I think it was very hurtful at, at certain times. And and Tasha just felt like the bigger fights and the bigger names, and she felt most comfortable being at welterweight, being at super lightweight. So yeah, of course I think she'll take any of those names at welterweight. And as I say, super lightweight. I know she feels that when she fought Katie Taylor at lightweight, it was a very very close fight, and and she felt like maybe a super lightweight she'd, she'd do even better so I think those are the names she's looking at. Ben Whitaker's ring return um, always exciting he said he's going to be a bit calmer with his ring entrance this time around but what are you expecting from a Belusky for? Look the key is just getting him active he got injured after his second fight probably shouldn't have fought in Saudi and and returned in Birmingham and we've managed to get him out straight again straight away again and then we'll announce his next fight straight away after this one I think we're going to see what what we always see from Ben he is a he is a superstar in the making but he's also got the talent to match and I said whilst I was up there we we debated whether he should be a, a fighting a super middleweight or light heavyweight when when we first signed him and I think he's come back from injury and and clearly been working with his strength and conditioner and He's a full-blown light heavyweight and he's a big light heavyweight and that's exciting and uh, yeah, delighted that he's back. Can't wait to see him in the ring on Saturday night and uh, yeah, long may it continue. He was out in New York this past week supporting Adam Karnacki. I'm sure you saw the comments of a Mr Eddie Hearn where he said at the end of the day you let someone else spend the money and when he's ready and he's had the education we'll come in and we'll take him to the biggest platforms and the big fights. Um, maybe teasing a little bit down the line you might work with Ben Whitaker just when you thought to him what Eddie had to say. Look, I don't think anyone's in a rush to to, uh, to leave Sky. I think ultimately Dan Aziz, I think, was called out last week. Caroline Dubois, even I got offered a fight last week. So um, I think it's flattering. And, and look, the biggest fighters are always going to get huge attention. And the fact that our stable now is, 
is getting big attention. I feel like in 12 months' time, they're going to be even bigger names. So, yeah, it's exciting, it's flattering, and um, long may it continue. Long may our stable keep getting spoken about and keep growing. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next 12 months. Just on Dan Aziz, um, there was an article which came out or reports last week that there was a fight lined up with Joshua Boatze. We did a bit of digging. Didn't seem to be the case. Lined up for August this is. And then speaking to Eddie Hearn over Zoom, Eddie said that um, he's in talks with Dan over a potential fight with Dimitri Bivol. What's Dan's current contractual situation? He's not in talks with Dan. But what, with Eddie and Dimitri Bivol? He's not in talks with Dan. Dan Dan's with Boxer, Dan's with Sky, and I've not received any... Uh, anything and um, yeah Dan Aziz and Joshua Bawatsi have agreed to fight each other we've not announced the date venue I know you I even even I see things and like where's that come from but yeah um, as I say our fighters getting attention is a good thing and sometimes I think it's a bit of distraction and a bit of deflection but Dan Aziz the journey we've been on to even have him it's actually incredible to even have him in our world level and to even have him in, in amongst these names. What a journey it's been. We'll have news on Dan Aziz in the next few days. We've already got a fight scheduled for him. And um, he wants all the big fights and I can't wait to, to, develop his, to see his career develop even further. So you can categorically say that there is no um, Bivol Aziz fight and once you've announced date, location, what have you, it will be Bawatsi and Dan Aziz. I can categorically say that we're his promoter and I've not received anything. That's fair enough, Ben. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, just moving forward, show clash this weekend with Matchroom. It's coming a bit of a frequent thing within the sport now. Any talks there with, in terms of main events or? Uh, look, I'd love to speak to Matchroom. Um, we speak to BT, we speak to Queensby. Let's see. I'd like to. I'd like to avoid clashing as well. I. I don't. I don't want to do it. But it takes the promoters to talk, and it takes the promoters to want to not clash. If they don't want to clash, then that's fine. We feel we've got the the biggest fights and the biggest platforms a lot of the time. And yeah, of course, for the sport, it'd be nice not to clash. I. I, I, I would be in favour of that. Smith Eubank Jr. too, or will it be Eubank Jr. and Connor Ben? Ben, what's the latest? I think. Conor Ben's got a process to go through with UCAD and I think once he's gone through that process then we can talk about who he fights next. I've said a few times what I expect to happen but um, yeah, I feel uncomfortable talking about that until, until it's gone through the, he's gone through the process with UCAD. So do you still expect to see Smith Eubank Jr. 2 next? I do, I do. What would be a revised date for that? I'm hoping that we have an agreed date Oh, I'm hoping we can announce a date literally in the next week. That was going to be my next question. I was wondering how the second half of your calendar is looking in terms of fight dates, um, locations. I know you can't say too much now, but when are you looking to kind of start rolling the ball out on all of that? We're going to try to announce our schedule at once. We start on uh, at the end of August. We've got two shows in September, two shows in October already all in. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to announcing that. This is our last one really of this season and then we kick off in August. But what's exciting for us is our fighters are actually getting to the stage where we signed a lot of fighters and we had to develop those fighters from Dan Aziz to Richard Riappor to even Savannah Marshall, Tasha Jonas and, and the Olympians coming through, the Carolina Bars, Adam Azims. They're now getting to the stage where we're seeing them in their career-defining fights and uh, our schedule from, from September is testament to that. We've got world titles, we've got our guys that we've built in the in the in the in the biggest fights to date, and um, yeah, it's a it's a special time for us because it's been you know the last six months have been difficult. You know, having two pay per views fall through injury and having so many injuries and and having to put your fighters ahead of you and make sure that they keep active even even when those things are going on. Um, it's been difficult, but what we have now is a stable and a, a, and, a, and and fighters that are at the very very top. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to announcing that soon. Just to end on, you mentioned um, Richard Riakpour there. Looking at the cruise right scene, I asked Sugar Hill Steward what was the latest with Lawrence Okoli. When I last spoke to you, there were reports coming out that we'd see CBS versus Masternick and obviously Riakpour up a tire. Well, from what Sugar said, he's expecting to see Lawrence and his last conversation was Lawrence wants to face CBS once again. Is that the case as far as you're aware now? Look, Lawrence does. we got to speak to the broadcaster. I think Lawrence will have learned a lot from that experience. Let's see what happens. No news on 
on exactly what we're going to get through yet with the broadcaster. Richard's next fight will be a world title as well, so there's plenty of fights, plenty of world title fights, hopefully a British unification at some point, but let's, uh, let's see. Uh, ben, pleasure as always. I'm leaving now to go and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Cheers, mate.